Elon Musk's secretive brain chip company Neuralink has begun implanting its devices into human skulls. Neuralink belongs to an upcoming category of medical devices called brain computer interface that can help people who are paralysed or amputees regain some sense or movements. To discuss its merits and concerns, I'm joined by consultant neurologist Professor Mike Barnes. Welcome, Professor. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Neuralink is one of those words that, you know, it certainly lodged in my head, uh, no pun intended, uh, with all of the fascinating potential that it offers, but also a kind of a, a very strong sense of the unknown. So what is this latest news from and about Neuralink? Well, I think it's quite, it's potentially quite exciting. This technology has been around actually for a few years, so it's not brand new. It's been here for six or eight years. Um, basically, it's uh, implanting an array of very, very tiny electrodes in a relevant part of the brain. Um, part of the brain, for example, that controls movement or controls a hand movement. Um, the signal is then transmitted to uh, a computer that amplifies that signal and it's passed to a, a computer that will move a cursor. But a cursor, for example, on a computer will move when you think about it moving or your leg or your finger will twitch when you think about it moving. So potentially that's really exciting, particularly for people with spinal injuries. Because the only problem, I say the only problem, but the only problem with spinal injuries is a severance of the nerve between the brain and the, and the end, uh, end user, if you like, the hand or the arm or the leg. So it may be potentially really quite exciting for those people who may uh, be able to walk again, albeit perhaps at first clumsily, or use a hand again, or think about using a computer or a telephone again. Um, and so it's really very useful for those people. It's, I think it's, it's very early days. Uh, we've seen uh, a man on the uh, YouTube video that was controlling the computer for playing chess, uh, which is very exciting and very, very good news. But it's a, it is a long way to go. I wouldn't want people to think this, is, this technology is going to be here uh, tomorrow to help these people with any great um, certainty. Now, I think we, we can all see the way in which uh, being able to help a paralysed person, a quadriplegic person, for example, use arms and, and legs again would be wonderful beyond description. But, but there are also uh, c concerns, aren't there? And, and, and there's also, I suppose, ethical uh, considerations about the, the, the extent to which it would be appropriate to have an interface between a, a biological human and... Yeah. And, and machinery. It could be open to abuse yeah. in the wrong hands, couldn't it? I think it could. I think it's like many things. It needs proper controls uh, and proper um, scrutiny, if you like, to make sure it's being used for the right purpose in the right people and it's not abused. You're right, there is potentially worrying things about it. Um, there's also always, uh, so far, there's been worry, of course, about the potential abuse of animals in the research at uh, Neuralink Laboratory. That was in the press a, a year or so ago. So there's many ethical uh, hurdles to overcome here. Uh, if they can be overcome, and I hope they are, then I think it could be really quite life-changing for people with a whole variety of neurological conditions, particularly spinal injury. Oh, definitely. But, but does it raise the spectre of um, outs and outside agency uh, having access to what's going on in an individual's uh, head? Is there a possibility of it's being yeah. misused, hacked? I don't even, I'm not even sure what terminology to use. No, no I, I think at the moment the answer to that is no. Um, all the device is doing at the moment is recording the signal in the brain. It's not allowing signals to be put into the brain as yet. Uh, it's recording what the brain's doing. The, the part of the brain thinks I want to move that cursor to the left. The signal records that part of the brain. So at the moment, in its very, very early days, I don't think it is open to any significant abuse. But I think you're quite right to be a little bit concerned that in the future, perhaps as, as the technology improves, and it will improve over the next four or five years, uh, we need proper controls to make sure that it's not abused by those uh, who might want the wrong purpose behind it. Now, futurologist and yes. Ebon, I can only imagine that this fills you with a considerable amount of 
uh, excitement in terms of its potential, but do you, is it a double-edged sword? Oh, it's definitely a double-edged sword, and I am, I've always professed a, a musketeer. I, I, I love the majority of what Elon does. Uh, and as has been pointed out, this has been around for a little while. We had a report last year, in August last year, of Anne, a 30-year-old, who, when she was 30, had a stroke, and she'd been paralysed for 18 years. And they managed to do this, uh, put, put a, an implant in her brain and managed to get signals that, using Avatar, created from her wedding video, she could do facial expressions and communicate in a way she hadn't been able to mm -hmm. for several years. So really, really exciting on that point of view. But this is the worst it's going to be. It's only going to get better from now on. And so you're right to talk about the other possibilities. To talk about This is telepathy. You can find out what people are thinking on that sort of basis. Is that... How does that sound to you, Mike? You know, the, the very idea of, of, a, of telepathy. You know, not now, obviously... Uh, but in the future, would it, would it be possible that, that people would be able to share thoughts using a, a more developed iteration of this technology? I actually think probably yes. I mean, we're a long way from that. I think people need to worry that technology is around the corner because it's a long, long way away, several decades, I would imagine. But yes, in theory, after all, we thought this technology was exciting 10 years ago. It was nothing was, it couldn't be even thought of 10 years ago. So, yeah, things will move, and I think that's why we do need careful control to make sure this technology is properly controlled, properly regulated, and only put in the hands of those who really need it and will benefit from it. But, Andrew, it could be, couldn't it, uh, seen as opening the door to transhumanism, oh, which yeah, that... is that whole other world of, of exactly what does it mean if we can merge the biological human and, and the electronic oh, machine. You're, you're absolutely right. We talked about Steve, uh, Steve uh, in the, the old days of the $6 million man, you might remember. Steve Austin, it was. Uh, nowadays, it's the $44 billion man uh, with, with Elon Musk. Those sort of science fiction has become science fact. Uh, and I, I, mean, I disagree, I think, about the time frame. I think it's going to happen a lot, lot quicker. Do you think so, uh, Mike Barnes? Do you think, actually, the whole thing could accelerate quite quickly? Do you think maybe Neuralink are capable of more already than, than perhaps we know? I think, well, it's possible. And, of course, with Elon Musk's money behind it, that, that a lot can move quite quickly. And I honestly think that the brain is so complicated and at the moment what they've got is actually very simple in, in terms of just thinking to move a, a cursor from left to right is actually quite simple compared to all the uh, nuances of, of human thought. So I do think... Um, we are quite a long way away from that becoming anything like reality, to be honest. But we are, I, I think it's probably safe to say, fair to say, that we're, we've opened a door uh, into a potential yeah. future with lots of ethical and, and moral uh, considerations and conversations that need to be had. Thank you, Professor Barnes, for that contribution yeah, so far true. this evening.